Lord, we thank you that you didn't leave us here trying to earn our way back to your good graces. You knew that our sins were too much and too constant for us to ever be good enough to ever be fully or forgiven forever. But out of your great love for your people that you created, you instead sent your eternal and perfect son to us as a baby. The genesis of your plan to give us a second chance at having the eternal life that you intended for us upon creation. We bless you, Father, for your Son, who still gives us tidings of great joy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. Um, I, like uh, Father Andrew, am a somewhat late-in-life convert to Anglicanism, but I have learned something in my 20 plus years as an Anglican, that today is the first day, really and truly, that you're entitled to say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you for sharing these few minutes of your Christmas day together. And if this is the only or the first time that you've been in our church this year, we give you a special thanks for choosing to be here. Most of all, we thank you all for not letting Christ get lost in Christmas. I've never been in a Christmas pageant like many of us experienced last night, or even a little nativity play. Uh, play. Um, our granddaughter once played Mary, and of course she wore this blue robe, and she had a cloth tied around her head with that little cord and that band around it. She was just adorable, and I'd be glad to show you the pictures later if you'd like to see that. <laughs> now, I remember the year before we moved to Alabama uh, that our church gave our daughter the opportunity to serve as an angel like you were last night, Reese. I, re I remember that her uh, costume was a white robe. It had really big sleeves. She had these cool wings and this tinsel halo. And she had one special line. Do not be afraid. I bring tidings of great joy. That's a line that even a six-year-old can remember. But... It's also why we're here today. It's very simple, but it's nonetheless true. We are here because of the great tidings of joy that a baby, but not just any baby, the baby God himself has been born in Bethlehem. And it's why we're here. And it's wonderful news. But you know what? Based on the drivers that I saw this morning on my way to church, it's not obvious to everyone. I work in an IT department, and almost all of my colleagues are either Muslims or Hindus. So I know just a little bit about which I'm about to speak. Muslims find our Christmas message a little difficult to comprehend. As you know, they worship Allah, and Allah is this eternal potentate who judges everyone based on the things that they do right and the things that they do wrong. And quite frankly, a Muslim would find it very hard to believe that a god would be in a stinky livestock stable. At the end of your life, Allah will judge, he'll weigh the good and the bad that you've done. If, if the bad outweighs the good, thumbs down for you. 
Now, while our Christmas belief is that the evidence that God is love is that he does not stay up in heaven, but instead he comes to us in a smelly stable in Bethlehem. And in so doing, he shows how much you're worth, how precious you are to him. Rather than leaving us in our mistakes and the flub-ups that we've made in our life, he shows us his love. And he came into our midst to rescue us from all the bad things that we've done in our lives. The Christmas message is do not be afraid. I bring you glad tidings of great joy. Because Jesus was born to rescue us from our wrongdoings, to give every single one of us a second chance, a new start, regardless of how much or how often we've messed up our lives. Now, there's a reason, for example, that several members of this church are running a Celebrate Recovery ministry. You see, since God came into the earth as a baby, when our lives were totally messed up, then shouldn't we also give others a second chance? After all, their hurts and hang-ups and habits. If God was born to give us a second chance, then we should do whatever it takes to ensure that others give a second chance too. The message of Christmas is confusing not only for Muslims, it's also confusing for our Jewish and our Hindu friends. John 1.12 says, But to all who receive him, who believe on his name, he gave power to be called children of God, born not of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, to all who received him and believed on his name. You see, for you and me, it's a choice. Nobody made you come here this morning. You made a choice. For our Jewish and our Hindu friends, this makes absolutely no sense at all. Whether you like it or not, if your father's a Hindu, you're a Hindu. If your mother is Jewish, you're Jewish. It's not up to you. It's up to ancestry. They would say that changing your religion would be like trying to change who your mother is. But from the very beginning, Christianity has been a religion of choice. Jesus wasn't born in a palace where people would have no choice but to worship him, but he was born in a stable, in a little-known township on the edge of the empire. That sort of baby couldn't make anybody follow him. It had to be a choice. But to all who receive him, who believe on his name, it was a choice. Like your choice to come here this morning. Coming to a Christmas morning service makes absolutely no sense unless God exists. I wouldn't do it if it wasn't true, would you? But of course it is true. And that's why you have chosen to come. Now, if you were here last night, you would have heard Father Andrew's reference to a Charlie Brown Christmas. And he talked about a soliloquy by Linus in reading Luke 2. I had no idea that Father Andrew and I shared a favorite theologian in Charles M. Schultz. We didn't plan it this way, but I want you to hear about another scene from a Charlie Brown Christmas. Everyone knows Charlie Brown's nemesis, Lucy. 
Lucy comes into her, she, by the way, she just reminds me of my little sister. And I, Leslie, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Uh, she, Lucy comes into this room where Charlie Brown is standing. And Lucy says, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Tis the season of peace on earth and goodwill to men. Therefore, I suggest that we forget all about our differences and we love one another. And do you remember how Charlie Brown's face just lit up when she said that? And he says to Lucy, that's wonderful, Lucy. I'm so glad you said that. But tell me, do we have to love each other only at this season of the year? Why can't we love each other all year? And Lucy retorts, what are you, fanatic or something? Well... I'm afraid you have chosen to be in a church of fanatics. People from this church support an orphanage, two Christian schools. We are involved in missions projects every month. We support multiple pro-life ministries. We provide meals to the hungry. We partner with others to minister to the homeless, and we conduct a 12-step recovery group called Celebrate Recovery. I could go on. But what this shows is that God is love, and He did not stay in heaven. By coming to that stinking stable, Jesus shows just how much you and I are worth. And that's why the people who normally fill these pews are doing all those fanatical things. This is the glad tidings of great joy. The Christmas message of second chances and new hope. Christ church is a growing church even during a more than a year-long pandemic. And I think there's a reason that this church is growing. It's because the Christmas message that we celebrated last night and we're celebrating today is a message that we celebrate all year long. It's a life-changing message and an attractive message. That's why so many people who first come to a Christmas Eve service or a Christmas morning service are also going to get up tomorrow morning and come here for yet another worship service. You and I have made a decision not to divorce Christ from Christmas. We all walked through those doors. We're sharing prayers. We're singing carols. We've heard God's word read, and in just moments, we'll celebrate Holy Communion. But the thing that I want you to know is you'll keep coming back week after week, long after Christmas is over. And that's why our church is growing. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for letting me take you back to a Christmas pageant when you were a child. Thank you for being able to remember the angel's important line. Do not be afraid. I bring you glad tidings of great joy. May the rest of your Christmas be filled with that kind of joy and faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.